So, um, being that it's six o'clock, according to our community television and others, uh, satellite, the satellites, uh, and call the regular meeting to order. It's August first. Happy August, everyone. Uh, first thing is to uh, approve minutes from last time, which was July the eighteenth. So, motion to that effect, please. So, second. Good. Any um, changes, comments, discussion on the minutes? Minutes are good. All in favor of approving the minutes as written, please say aye. Aye. Carries. That was everyone. Next is um, set adjust agenda. Are we good with the agenda as written, or does anybody have anything to? Alberta Miller has parts A, B, C, and D. I know, but do um, you need an E, or are you all set there? Okay. All right. A, B, C, and D is plenty. Okay. Anybody have any changes? I'm gonna roll with the agenda as written. Um, Communication from the audience. Is anybody here for an item uh, to discuss something with us generally that's not, we're not going to get to later? Um, probably not. I'm going to get to it later. Yeah, okay. We have something to discuss on the taxes. So, the, so you're going to, oh, so sorry. You're going to wait till the tax discussion? Is that it? Oh. Okay. Perfect. Um, all right, so next up is um, town manager report from Sean Fielder, who has communicated to us some of that, but yeah, what do you have? You got it. Whoa, stop there. <laughs> Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, I have, uh, in the end part of July, conducted a handful of um, trash ordinance uh, issue investigations and um, have um, been in communication with uh, Richard Brochu, a town health officer. And uh, for full disclosure, I am the deputy health officer for the town. We have issued a couple of uh, ordinance violation notices to uh, several individuals. Uh, there is a, a time period for folks to take action, of course, and we'll be following up on those in uh, mid-August. So I just wanted everybody to be aware of that. The um, the Bridgman Reservoir roof construction bid opening was planned for yesterday and we had a pushback to next week. I think it's the 7th and my apologies, I wasn't able to pin that down. Um, what happened is that there were a handful of questions from those construction firms that were interested and they needed uh, A&E or engineering outfit did need to issue an addenda uh, to respond to some of those questions. Uh, there's some positives here and that is there are six firms that are showing interest so that's good. Mm -hmm. um, we were concerned about how many firms would be showing interest being that it's a busy construction season is what we're hearing generally uh, for industry work. So we have a, a handful of firms that are interested. Um, this should not impact uh, the anticipated start of construction. So the business that had intended to be on tonight's agenda for the select board to authorize us going forward with the uh, construction firm that A&E was gonna suggest, uh, that will be in order for the August 15th meeting. So um, in some respects, going to August 15th is a bit better because if we had had to take action tonight, there would have been some items hanging out there. This just allows a little bit more time to firm, firm things up. As examples, um, the uh, bond and banking information for the firm that were picked, they'll have time now to have that in order for our August 15th meeting. So it's literally the letter of intent to award the contract. So again, we're, we're on time with our schedule. Uh, I'll and, say this. Go ahead, Eric. Well, I was thinking of having six firms apply for this or to bidding on it, and it and the documents that they're bidding on explicitly state that we need it done December 15th. December 15th. So I think that's really good news in terms of, I mean, if there are that many people thinking they can do it. That's great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it, obviously we know it's an aggressive schedule with December 15th, you're pushing the envelope, but uh, we're, we're hopeful we can hit the mark, and these firms know this, so uh, good points there. Um, on the Yellow Burn project, um, the group, the planning group is continuing to work on uh, environmental uh, reporting and getting things in order there. Uh, very significant item from earlier this week is that uh, we had put in an application to the U.S. Economic Development Administration and we have a response back from that, uh, from that group, excuse me, that is considered responsive. And what responsive means is that there's enough um, 
content and uh, value in the proposal that they want to have a little bit more detail uh, questions answered so we can go in for the final determination is this a worthwhile project so this is a very positive uh, indication the planning group uh, with support from NVDA and many other partners CAE as an example uh, Eric's on the planning team um, you know a lot of folks involved with this uh, ACCD at the state level that's Agency of Commerce and Community Development uh, Vermont DEC I mean, there's many groups that are working on the town's behalf to try to get to, all right, we're going we're gonna to have a good project here, get the funding in order. So uh, that timeline on that is um, we're trying to get our final response item in order by the end of August. The EDA, uh, Economic Development Administration, has a 60-day window to do a response. So that, this is a very positive uh, in another way that other folks who are considering being involved with the project, most notably the Vermont Community Development Program, which is uh, uh, a board that has recently received our $1 million application request for grant, they want to see something like this as a commitment and the comment would be hopefully it brings some of these other partners along. So I think we're in a, a good position there. I don't know if you want anything, Eric. I did just think of something, but now it's gone. <laughs> All right, I'll circle back if you need to. Um, the uh, Lamoa Valley Rail Trail uh, projects are, um, we're, we have a lot of things moving in a positive fashion there. Um, we are, uh, I'm going to announce this because it's just been sent to me via an email from our contact at USDA. We are actually, we've been noticed that we are going to receive a $175,000, 512, excuse me, $175,512 grant award for this project. Uh, just Yay. for, yeah, that's Yay. a big deal. It's so a big deal. This started out as a grant request of uh, 150,000. Um, Eric's been providing some support on this. Uh, we've been working hard on this at the uh, manager's office level. So we'll we'll have a final sign off in the next seven to ten days. But this is excellent. This is supporting uh, the work out to the east, but generally it's supporting the overall 16 miles of improvement for the LVRT. So it's it's very significant. Are there any strings on it? Um, yeah, I mean, we've got our match money and, and things like this, but those are parameters that we knew going in. So, um, you know, anything that's not achievable, there's no issues there whatsoever from my perspective. So it's a really good situation. And fewer strings than some other pots of money we're using for other sections. Good. Yep. Yeah. And just, sorry not to jump in, but Go ahead. just... The, the folks who are working with the USDA have just been so supportive and they want our, they want to help fund our project and it's just, it's really, really good that we're... Yeah, I'd be a shout yeah. out to the Vermont USDA office. The number of officials there have been doing just amazing support work for us and they care about these rural investments in our state so uh, they've really done some excellent work so I appreciate it very much. Town does for sure. So that's 170 some thousand, mm -hmm. right? 175 and five. So what's that? Um, I forget what the total figures are for that. Do we have an expected total figures? We, so just we started out at 420,000, so that will scale up appropriately. So it's uh, this is uh, we had scaled a little bit, and uh, it's somewhere north of 420,000. I don't know the exact math on that, Lucian. Okay. So what this allows us to do is. Um, you know, we were going at this that we were doing the improvements from Slap Hill out to Pumpkin Lane with more grant being put on the table in generic terms. It's allowing us to put more into the actual construction aspect of this. So what it means is we have a very high probability we're going to get everything improved from Slap Hill out to Pumpkin Lane in, uh, in the next year. So, I mean, that's just, it's outstanding. Yeah. And if we'd gotten the, some number less than 150, it equates to less linear distance that we can get maintained and upgraded. So anything more is just a really positive thing. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you want to add anything, Eric. It's a, bit of a, third, a third of the total budget. <laughs> For that, that section. section. Yeah. yeah, and we have the, yeah, the other things that are funded through other, right, right. other sources. Yeah. But yeah, it's really, yeah, really positive. Okay, so uh, also on LVRT, and then I'll move on to some other subject matter. Um, VAST is uh, still leading up the uh, project to uh, deck and rail uh, the Iron Bridges number. They're referred to as Iron Bridges 38 and 40. Uh, those, um, the design information will be in within the next couple of weeks, and it is anticipated the decks and railings are on. Um, 
the end of this year. So even without section you're just talking about. Yeah. So even without yeah. our work on this previous USDA grant, we're going to have bridge decks and railings so that in the winter time, walkers and skiers could go all the way up the line this winter, which is excellent. Mm -hmm. So we're in a good position there as well. The, uh, the Judavine Library land merger, this has been discussed for three years now. Uh, we have our quick claim deeds in order and we're at the final step, which is the town's attorney will update the land merger deed. So then we'll be in a position where it's basically one piece of land where the existing library is and where the old senior center building is. And the, uh, there was a right away that just people were unsure how that should be handled. This issue will be resolved probably this next week. So we're all taken care of there. That's great. Have uh, have said ongoing communications with the uh, patent estate attorney for the Cary Road property. They are getting a plan in order. Um, the family is, you know, having to decide how they want to go with this with the probate court uh, input. And I'm keeping close contact with the uh, estate attorney uh, in regards to distribution of the assets. We're anticipating that taking place here in 2019. Um, the general tactic that's being discussed now is that uh, an auction company would assist with uh, doing an auction of those things of value. So uh, again, anticipate that uh, probably early fall is my guess with the information at hand. Um, have been working on a town local emergency operations response plan. This came up earlier this year. The, uh, the timing on these is May 1. Uh, a detail item came up in that the, the, there's a new template to do this emergency response plan for Vermont emergency management. I wasn't aware the template had been adjusted. Uh, that's, that's my error. So we're working on getting, the, uh, getting this update taken care of we would anticipate at this phase that the select board will um, acknowledge and sign off on this. In many respects, it's the same information that was in the uh, emergency response plan coming off the last template, but it is a new form. We're obligated to complete it, so we're getting that in order. I have contacted Aldrich and Elliott also on a separate project. Obviously, they're assisting us with the Bridgman Roof Reservoir project and uh, just picking their brain a little bit about some of our wastewater infrastructure, the wastewater lagoon, uh, what we might be looking at for needs as far as system improvements moving forward. So we're getting data in order on this. And uh, in effect, we're going to start looking at, you know, what are those priority needs? What are the timelines we're looking at? What do, you ha what do we have for funding options for uh, given investment? Some examples of improvements would be uh, we have an anaerobic cover on our number two uh, lagoon or number two cell. Do we have to check where we're at on our liners for the lagoons? You know, what other uh, plant upgrades should we be considering? As an example, do we need to be thinking about a pretreatment process? You know, with with a various industry that's um, uh, discharging high strength waste at certain times in, into the system. These are some of the things that we're going to be looking at. Um, I would point out that we do have a number of assessment forms that we have had done over time and are aware of. Um, and additionally, and this is a significant point, the, t the community has, the town has done a really good job over time. Uh, the select board is aware of this, uh, you know, doing capital investments. So, you know, there's, there's a number of things under this uh, area I've just been talking about now that we've already put some money aside. So we're just trying to figure out, look, let's get our priorities in order here and just make sure that the thing that should be addressed next is addressed next and we can be affording to do it, to, to say it that way. Having good water and wastewater service is obviously an important thing for a given community, so we got to keep on top of it. Two other items. Uh, I've completed the 2019-2020, sorry, it's through the fiscal year, so it would be through the end of uh, June 30th, uh, 2019. My dates are incorrect on the report the select board is looking at. We were obligated to do a Vermont health, uh, rental housing inspection report online for the Department of Health. I've logged the information for that. And then a, a, a huge shout out to the Fecto family, Amanda in our office. Um, Amanda gave birth to Hudson Andre Fecto on Wednesday morning and mom, baby, and dad are doing extremely well and uh, we wish them all the best for sure. So good news there. She wanted a July baby, she got her July baby. <laughs> Congratulations. So that's, that's great news. Yeah. That's all I have, Eric. Great, thank you. Any more questions for Sean? Oh, he's going.
What's the rental or what renting household inspection? Yeah, we um, so under the Department of Health, if we uh, we've got if we have a um, a complaint lodged or aware of a situation where uh, rental property is not meeting the rental code, then the town health officers uh, or the deputy health officers would be obligated to do an inspection to check into that situation. Hmm. These are they are infrequent. We just had one in that time period, and the, the uh, this report that we would do for a full blown inspection is 12 pages of information. We didn't have any comprehensive reports. We had some spot check items, just one actually in March for this year that we had to do a check in on. And, so, and you just are reporting on what you did? It's, of? yeah, the, yeah. The, all, the, all the login is doing is just validating the number of site visits. It's not the detailed report back that the department would have already, uh, they may or may not have seen that information to be clear. Oftentimes what you're doing on these is you're having a discussion between the, you know, with the landlord about about, hey, can you, you know, this is the concern that's been raised. It doesn't meet the code. You got a certain amount of time to deal with this. It's no different than how we go about our ordinance issues. You got a certain amount of time to address the issue, get it taken care of. And if you say hey, it's 30 days, then you check back in with them within 30 days. If it's not addressed, then other action can be taken. So you're looking out for the interest of the renters to make sure it's meeting all those check boxes of adequate rental, you know, whether it's escape routes, uh, no mold, uh, you know, proper heat, uh, fire extinguishers, CO monitors, smoke alarms, it's everything that goes along with that. So it's, there's the, a lot of information. The health officer can't initiate that. The renter has to make a complaint, no? That's how we're going about it. Yeah, that's, we don't go door to door and do inspections. That was inspections. my understanding. They, it, that's a correct statement. The renter has to make a complaint. That is a correct statement. You know, we aren't actively going out, it. knocking on rental properties and nope. saying we're here to do an inspection. That's not no. how we approach no. it in our community. I just wanted to clarify that's that. That's good to point that out. Thank you. So it is when the renter calls, then we're obligated to do the inspection. Then, yeah. And then the report you just filed is just a report of what you did over the last. Year. It's really the logistics of we had one. What here's the area it was in. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Yeah. All right. Sorry, I ran over. Oh my gosh. I'm gonna make it up here in a minute, though. Okay, good. Because <laughs> I'm doing Aaron's report. Okay. Uh, next is Tom with a road. Foreman report. What have you guys been doing? You've had some reasonable weather. We have. <laughs> well, Sunday Sunday down. night. <laughs> well, in between the down. So everything we've been great, great, great has gone right back the way it was. So I'll tell you well, that much. It's not quite as no, bad. No, it ain't quite as bad. No, it's not. But anyways, that like I said, uh, the grading that we have been doing, hopefully it's been holding up. I don't know the grading I did yesterday. I got my fingers crossed that it held up. Uh, did a little bit more today in a couple other place, places here in the village. Uh, the guys finished up on Macville Road ditching up through through there and they installed that new culvert. And we've just moved down to Marsh Road the beginning of the week, I think it was. And we had a problem down there, especially there was a new house that moved in down, down there that was constructed last year. Well, where a culvert cross, of course, is where he put his new driveway. So instead of the water filtering out through the woods the way it was, now it's running back in the road and was causing a problem. So so, but tomorrow uh, we should have that entire road done, stone, new culvert at the bottom, so that road will be complete. Uh, the mowing is in town. Uh, they started up towards East Sardic Way, up towards Demick Road, and they're working their way back towards the village this way. Uh, after we get done ditching tomorrow up on Marsh Road, uh, we got two headers that we're going to repair, one on Stage House and one on Stratton Road that we're going to be fixing up and getting those done and out of the way. Then after we get done doing that, we'll probably move up on Hardwick Farms and start that and get that going. Uh, crushing is supposed to be here within two weeks. So we also got to go in the pit and get that going. Uh, we've been puttering away at the reservoir. We got some of that knocked down in and stuff. So we'll be puttering away on that. Got our speed bumps in. I don't know if anybody's got any complaints on those, but they seem to be working okay so far. I watched somebody try to go around them. They can't go around them. They, they'll, they'll hit at least one tire down mm -hmm. through there. So It's okay because even if you try to go around, it still slows you down. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Yeah. That's fine. Mission accomplished either way. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so then we got the signs installed there that Sean ordered up yeah. on the stop signs. Those are up. Uh, about it, I guess. Oh, hot mix. We did hot mix. Did a load of hot mix. We still got to get more. So we ended up in East Hardwick, but still didn't have quite enough. So we got to go down and get another load of that. Finish out. We got East Hardwick and a little bit more here in the village to do. So about it. Yeah, I saw a lot of ditching 
when my travels in the last week, it looks like there's been, been a lot of work. Yeah. Oh, yeah, there's been a lot of, a lot well, of you know, one guy in the greater, the other three guys out dit ditching, the other guy in town. We did start meter pits too. Oh, you did? about that, yep, mm -hmm. yeah. Good. So we started on that project too, so. Awesome, and is that going okay? Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's all. I mean, new guys trying to get also going on like stuff. So. Digging in the village, you, it's a little bit of a crapshoot, right? Ooh. Like, you never know quite what you're digging into. Well, <laughs> most of the time, but you're hoping when you get down there, it's gonna be easy, but it never is. Right. And if, the thing that's going to be the hardest is that, of course, on all these places we've got to do, most of the time they ran the water here and the sewer here. So you got, you know, almost a two and a half foot diameter, diameter that's got to go, you know, Somewhere. right where the sewer and water is. So you're going to have to try to, but we'll make it work. Yeah. So but sure, but yeah. get yeah. around, so. Awesome. About it. Thank you. Questions for Tom? The concrete thing, didn't you say last time that the... Yeah, I'm just waiting for Jack Perry to... So that's when it's... Yeah. It'll happen whenever he can Yeah. Do yeah. Okay. Because I don't want... I mean, I could rip them up now, but they... Yeah, that's... I don't know how long they'll be dirt, so... Yeah. In the other area. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Tom. Yep. Uh, back to Sean to give the Aaron Cochran report in record time. There were 255 <laughs> incidences in the report period. That's the end of the report. All right, that's what we know. <laughs> and we have a report here, so we can read that. I did check with the ledger. chief if he wanted to relay anything else, and his apologies, he couldn't make it tonight. And uh, he didn't have anything in particular that needed to be relayed to the select board. So literally, that is the report for this, this meeting. Fair enough. Um, uh, so let's move on to um, the Alberta Miller item, <laughs> item number one, parts uh, A, B, C, and D. We'll start with A, which is the 2019 to 2020 tax rate discussion and approval. And I believe, looks, so wait, tax rate, this is water tax stuff on the top. Hmm? That's this is water and sewer. Tax Your tax rate is in the in packet. The back. Oh, in the packet. Yeah. Sorry. I'll catch up eventually. <laughs> Am I one more back? All right, oh, thank you. One more, I don't know. Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right, I'm ready. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so, um, the grand list went up some this year, um, which is good. And. Oh, hang on. Where's grand list? Where's, yeah. It actually is in the letter that I emailed all of you, but I don't think any of you printed it out and brought it with you. So I guess I should have made copies of it. I didn't put it in the packet either. <laughs> Alberta, I didn't, have I didn't put it in the packet because it was a letter to Oh no, it's here. Oh no, one percent. Yeah, one percent of the of the grand list is here. Yes, but not the like. This is the actual letter that I have for you guys. So the grand list went up. You won't see it on the pages that are in the packet because they were. It was in the letter part. Um, the grand list went up about one point four million dollars by the looks of it over last year. Um, the and one point four million. Mil it went up mm -hmm. on a total of what's our total grand list? 185 million something something something. So it went up 1.4. So that's something less than one percent. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. But so last year was considerably up, less up than is that. Always so good. Up is always good. We yeah, always look sure. for up. So. Right. Right. Um, so the increase in the municipal tax rate that we're, we're looking at for this year would be um, 0 0.0283 or a total of $28.30 per $100,000 of grand list value. So the rate that you guys would be approving tonight is based on this front sheet right here. That's the one that's in our packet. Yep. Um, the municipal tax rate is 1.2545. The local agreement, which the local agreement are the school taxes we still have to raise on all of the voted exemptions that we give. So we still have to set a tax rate. And this year we have to raise 19500 almost $19,500 in school taxes based on those exemptions that we give. Um, 
the so that so that increased this year from 0.0099 to point zero one zero five which is sixty cents per hundred thousand for the local agreement. So the total municipal tax rate to to run for the town for this year would be one point two six five oh and last year was last year was one point two two six two that's the breakdown is on the third page. That gives you what last year's rates were compared to what we're proposing for this year, with everything including. Because about a, it's just under three percent. Mm-hmm. Or no, is that a percent? No, that's dollars. Yeah, that no, that's dollars. It's just over two cents per hundred thousand increase for this year. Yes, closer to three cents per hundred thousand. All right, and um, the school rates increased um, this year too. Um, the homestead education rate is up 0.0084 or $8.40. And the non-residential education rate is up 0.0294, um, which is $29.40. On $100,000. On $100,000, yeah. And so okay. the, the, as a total, if you have a homestead in the town of Hardwick, your taxes would be looking at an increase of $37.30 per $100,000 of value. Mm -hmm. And if you're a non-residential property in the town of Hardwick, you'd be looking at an increase of $58.30 per $100,000. Questions? So I know this happens sometimes, and I know I've asked before and I've had the explanation, but I'm gonna ask again. So that where the non-residential rate is slightly lower than the homestead rate, and I know that happens sometimes, but I don't remember why. Because they um, non-residents do not have an option to vote on bonds and et cetera that we get to vote on. So when the schools go to bond, when the town goes to bond, it changes our rating, and that in turn changes our tax rate. But that, those numbers just come back from the state. Yes, I, get, so. I have no choice. That totally is a paper. I'll show it to you. It looks like this it comes from the state and it tells me exactly what I have to charge. I have no- For the, for the education, yes. right. Yep, I have no control over that at all. That is, that is all set by their formulas. People have questions for Alberta about the tax rate. I hope it's all good. It's just the way it is. You're pretty good. You're pretty sure your math is correct. I am. Okay, just checking. <laughs> you know, like when I ask if we have any problems with liquor license people, I yes. also need to ask. Are you sure your math is right? Because I didn't didn't check. Um, all right. So. Do you want a motion to approve the 2019-2020 tax rate? As. Proposed As by the town proposed clerk. Proposed by town clerk, yes. Yes, please. So moved. Second. Okay, any more discussion about the tax rate? So the tax well, there, there was. Sorry, oh, sorry. Uh, Brenda Bollier here. Uh, I'm a resident and I have a home here, so therefore I'm a taxpayer. Yep. <laughs> Just so you know. um, The reason I'm here is because. When the taxes, the tax notices for everyone went out for 2018, I talked to John, and also there was an article in the paper about this. Um, I don't know if I'm going to put this right, but Alberta will correct me if I'm wrong, please. Um, I know there is property 
that is in the grant list or whatever that um, is not taxed and we get a reimbursement for that from the state, correct? Something like that. Something like that. Oh, it's taxed at a lower rate and we get a hold harmless right. reimbursement from the state. For and the taxpayers. And last year it was wrong. And last year it wasn't wrong, it just never came through. Well, was it I calculated think. incorrectly? It was that, yeah, the state calculated it incorrectly. So by the time we had set the tax rate, we had added in the shortfall to the to the tax rate for last year. So they did not get the reimbursement, right? We did get the reimbursement, but we had also already charged the taxpayers for it too. Right. So they did, in essence, get the reimbursement. So I called, uh, I talked to John about it, and he gave me a number of someone to call, and I have the name as a matter of fact. And I called that person, and John called that person. And as it turned out, uh, the state had done it wrong. Right. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and finally, you know, we got, I guess, what we were supposed to have gotten. Yes. However, not. <laughs> To ring my bell here, if it hadn't been for me, that would not have happened. And thank you for your input on that. But my question is now, what's going to happen with that money? Is it going to be returned to the taxpayers, or is it going to be, are we going to sit on it and use it for other means um, so that we don't have to ask the taxpayers for more money, in, in essence? Uh, and in the one hand, I'm in, maybe in agreement with that, but on the other hand, don't the taxpayers have the right to a say in that? So, um, we, fortunately, we have the people here who I think can answer all aspects of this question, but I'll, let me just take a, a stab at, at it from like a, a large, uh, like a 20,000 foot view. And that is that whenever, um, whenever we set the budget that we're going to work on and we vote on it at a town meeting, that budget is, is you know, we're voting on a, on a number that we're going to spend and then um, we have a breakdown of where we think all that's going to, where we're going to spend that money and what we think we're going to get for revenue and it's all, you know, it's a, it's a best guess, but it's, none of it is exactly right. Like, none of it. But, you know, you get through the year and diesel costs more, but tires were less or, you know, whatever. I don't know, you know, I just made that up. But things fluctuate. And I think the rev, I, so on the, we're more used to that on the expense side maybe. Maybe we're better at projecting the revenue side. And this is a case where the revenue side was off. And because of your persistence and John John's persistence, we were able to ultimately get the correct hold harmless amount back from the state. You are correct that that came into revenue of the last fiscal year, right? People, yes. So, and um, that fiscal year just ended on June 30th. So, uh, just okay. So, just from a large, uh, high point of view, it's not like that extra revenue from the state went into some special bucket somewhere. It came in as general revenue for to offset operating expenses. With that said, I honestly I don't. How do um, do we end the year? Do you? Are we too soon to say how we ended the year? We're too soon. We're too soon. We're still but closing out the books. Right, because then there's still it's bills coming. that, coming right. Yeah. So we don't really, so is there money as a surplus from last year? Some years we have a surplus and some years we have a deficit and that always rolls into or out of the, um, um, the something fund. Help me. Uh, fund balance. Fund balance. So we have a fund balance, which is sort of like a savings account, which um, has uh, some three, four hundred thousand, four hundred and eleven thousand. Yeah, as of, roughly. As of eighteen, yeah. And our auditors would like us to have a little bit more money in there as a kind of a buffer for for bad years. So, so you're right. I mean, we could do something that's like a some sort of direct offset to taxpayers. 
I guess at this point, we don't know that that money tipped us toward ending the year in, you know, with extra cash. And if it had gone back to the taxpayers, then we don't even know what would have happened then we could have otherwise. Could have, yes. Because we, I, I think the last report we had from Casey was, well, it's going to be close. Yeah. Real close. Real close. Like, so it could be yeah. that, you know, that money saved us from having to pull out of our um, fund balance. And that was something that was discussed way back in November or December that at that point we needed to sort of stop and hold that at that time because eventually it, would, it could go back into the fund balance if there was extra but with the winter we had and everything it was really looking like we needed that money towards expenses so and it does yeah i mean so ultimate one more thing Eric. yeah go ahead. i remember our discussing the state has made this mistake you know it could we could reissue tax bills with the corrected piece and decided not to, one, because it would cost more to do that, and two, it would generate an enormous amount of confusion. So we decided to just go with what had happened and work with the money as it came in. And that makes perfect sense. I mean, that, that, I guess that's certainly not a question in my mind. The question is, would it then be able to be reimbursed for the following year? Or, again, is it going to be held in, in fund? fund? Yeah. yeah, so... We don't know that yet. We don't know that yet. And, and every year when we're budgeting, you know, and, and, when, and when we vote on the budget at town meeting, when we actually do it, um, you know, I suppose there's always an option to kind of try to short fund a year and know that at the end you're going to deplete the fund balance. Right now, the, the best advice we have is that we want to do just the reverse, and if possible, we want to build that fund balance a little bit in case of a, you know, seriously bad year that, you know, is unanticipated. So our direction has been, I think for the time I've been on the board, has been let's try to budget as close as we can to what we think the actual expenses are going to be and, um, and you know, not try to cut it to the bone because when we do that and there's an unexpected expense, it ends with us ending the year in the red and having to dip into the fund balance, which is not what we want to be doing. Or borrow money. Or yeah, or borrow instead. Yeah. Or charge taxpayers more. Right. Oh, okay. The following year, right. So that's the other thing is that it the, it out. the year savings count. Yeah. The years that yeah, John went back at one point several years ago and went back and looked at the fluctuation and increases and found that after trying to keep in, trying to limit the tax increase to a very low amount for one or two years, then there would be a much spike. bigger jump. There's always a spike after that because at some point you have to catch up. So anyway, that's a very long-winded way of answering your question. So then my next question would be, what happens for a reversion that we supposedly we get this year? Is that in this? Or did we get any? It, so no. The, Is it in the calculation? It's not in the calculation because the dis my understanding was the decision was made that you were going to hang on to it and see what happened. The not decision, that it was no, for the, the hold harmless amount that we expect coming this year. This year. This year's hold harmless is is in at the one whatever we budgeted for at the one fifty times sixteen one fifty one right which is close to or the same as what we ended up getting last $150, year one hundred and fifty thousand nine hundred and sixteen dollars so and I don't have the total the solid total for hold harmless this year but but we baked it into the budget as what it, what what the final adjusted amount was last year. Right. Mm -hmm. So basically we said, it should give all things being equal, it should be about the same, and that's what's baked into this. Yeah. This, this yeah. year's budget. Yeah. So it is in this year. Yeah. It did basically get the same anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 
But we don't have it yet. No, we don't have they it yet. They haven't told us. Oh, but you did bank it in. We yes. baked it in. We banked it in. But we don't actually have the money. Right. If it comes up short, though, we now know who to call in the state <laughs> because John had that whole conversation. Yeah. Or you can borrow it. We'll pick up the last one here for you. short or direct answer, but... No, it's okay. It's, it's basically the same. Basically my thought process, so yeah, yeah it's fine. It's in there. It's still money that's to the benefit of the townspeople. But it's, yeah, not going to be in the form of some sort of reimbursement check or anything like that. It just worked. It works to our advantage for the town, either in helping us have end with a closer to a balanced budget last year, or perhaps, if we're lucky, even contribute a little bit to the fund balance. But last, our last report, um, it was tight. It was going to be tight. What Casey told us when she last, which was third quarter, probably right. Yes. Yeah. In September, because we have to wait 60 days for invoices to come in, um, and then it would be unaudited, but it's right. some preliminary numbers. Right. So we're yeah. It may be that that money just caused us to come in about even. At least we hope. <laughs> yeah. Because we did. It was a long winter, and Tom's crew kept plowing the roads. I see, and yeah. Yeah. So, but thank you again for for um, working on that As last year. As a real estate, you can also make mistakes. In fact, this our town is not the only one that made mistakes. I am not surprised. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, and that was a big mistake. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Thank you. So, so that's the discussion, so there's still a, we still have to vote. Oh, sorry, thank you. Um, so motion on the table is to um, to accept the, or yeah, the tax rate, or um, set the tax rate uh, as the town clerk has proposed, and that is a rate of 1.2650. 1. So any more discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. I think that was everyone. Alberta, you're now on to item B. Item B. This is, <laughs> this is the questionnaire. Yes. So this is the annual um, fiscal management questionnaire that um, the state's attorney general's office wants um, clerks and treasurers to discuss with their boards right. um, so that you guys are familiar with who and how we keep track of the finances for the towns. Um, so I think all of you now have seen this before. Um, the, yep. the, the answers pretty much stay the same every single year. Um, with the exception this year that Casey's name is now part of our part of our tribe, so. Right. <laughs> but yeah, the I mean, there's what twenty something questions I think, and it just it really is just to inform you guys where and how we deal with the money that comes in, the bills that we pay, the way that we pay them, who signs checks, who balances checkbooks, um, how money goes out. So when it says you, it's referring to, to you, the treasurer? Who's that referring to? Which part are you talking about? Oh, are you a participant in any business which does business with the town? Oh, yes, so they're talking about the treasurer, yes. Okay. There's no question about Sherry's uh, reviewing. Signing off on it. Yeah. That's no, interesting. There is not, part of and this is, a, this is, this is the state's question. Yeah. Um, so no, I'm just there's noting. Nothing, yeah, there's nothing on it about. Um, I think it's probably time for them to relook at it because they they did miss a lot of things. Yeah, um, that is covered in our audit though. They right, but we about yeah, parents yeah. and such. So we just yeah. right. do because it's a good practice. Yeah, I'm just a little surprised that they don't have it on this mm -hmm. list because there are a lot of other things that are quite similar. Yes, yeah, they yeah, ask some they don't of the have same. It on their list either, and that's how they can make these big mistakes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they have some of the same, almost the same questions over and over again, just yeah. worded slightly differently too. Right. But. Yeah. Um, 
So we need to uh, have a motion to that, we? that we've received. Yeah, we have to acknowledge receipt, I think. And sign it. That you got it, so I can put it in the audit. So just to have it in our minutes as a. Uh, can we move to acknowledge receipt of the financial management questionnaire? So moved. Second. Any more questions? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. That's everyone. So I can sign that. Now we're next on to Alberta's C, year end revenue report for water and sewer budgets. So now we're looking at water and sewer. That's what's on the top of this. That's what this extra, yes. The pillared one. Uh, okay, that can send back. All right, so the highlights. So let me start with a couple of, of quick statements. The yeah. first one is this is just giving you guys the breakdown of where we ended for revenue for last year. This is not in any way talking about what we're going to do for this year. Right. So for anybody out there who thinks that we might be doing that tonight, we are not. Um, so what I did was um, I went through um, the budgets from this past year mm -hmm. and I put in all the code um, combos that we had come up with and what we billed for each one of them as a total for the year what we had budgeted for each one of them as a total for the year and then um, showed where we had shortfalls so for the water budgets um, wait where are we looking the long pages. The long pages. First one. Uh, I, I didn't um, see how Casey. It's gonna be your yeah. second one. This one, right? Yes. Budget to that one. Budge, budget to difference. Yep. This one. So where it says billing, budget, and difference. It's gonna be your bottom long one. Yep. Okay. Screen. Last one. Okay. Water is or blue no, and sewer is green. Oh, yep. Blue. Mm -hmm. oh. Blue for water. Blue for what? Green for sewer. Because, <laughs> <laughs> you know. Yeah, okay. Okay. That's true. When I started here, that's how the file folders were color coded, too. It was oh, really? blue for water and green for sewer. There you go. Not brown for sewer. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, in most of the categories, we did all right or, or exceeded some of our, of our expectations, but there were a lot that we were short in. Um, we did change some of the categories as the year went on. We went from having, um, from not having a water off rate to having a water off rate, which changed 21 customers from being regularly billed to being a lesser bill. Mm -hmm. So that we knew was going to be a difference that might, might make a change. Um, so, so but we, on, on net? Is it, am I reading this correctly that on net we were short, short $6,100, 61 was on what we a, were short for water. On a budget of 296000 and change. Yes. Mm -hmm. So. Pretty good. Not Pretty too good. bad. Not bad. Pretty no, we really didn't do bad. We were 2% low, which. Good. Yeah. Yeah. And being that, I mean, again, it was our last, first time. Right, last year when we talked about this, we knew that we were starting it from square one and that we could right. have some ups and downs and we didn't know where we'd come out this year. So this really wasn't bad considering. So, I mean, I think it's fair to say we still know it's not perfect, right. um, but at least we adequate, we nearly adequately funded our water system yes. this year. Yes. So it paid for itself essentially. Yeah. So that's good. Yeah. And we'll keep fine tuning as yes. we move forward. Mm -hmm. Um Okay. And then I did this similar for the sewer, same same kind of issues. We had a few that we were short in. Um the deficit is a little bit bigger for sewer. Um it's uh, double the budget, double the deficit. It's about $12,000. 126347. Um, for deficit on the sewer side. So again, I mean, it's on a $428,000 budget, so. Almost three. Yeah. Yeah. Similar percentage. Almost three yeah. percent. Mm -hmm. 2.8. 
So, you know, I mean, again, it was our first year. It could have been worse. It could have been so much worse. We really, I thought we came out That's actually enough. in pretty good, pretty good standing considering. Right. So, yeah. So. Congratulations. <laughs> good guess. <laughs> Well, there was a lot of work that went into the guess. <laughs> I know. <laughs> so it's not, I mean, actually it's surprisingly good, all things considered, I think. Um, yeah. All right, so that's good. Do you guys have any other, I mean, I know this is just kind of a preliminary, this is what we did, but. Yeah. So what's the, um, we're gonna have to then talk about structuring for next year and all that. And right. what, what's the rough timeline for that? Our next billing cycle ends September 30th. So we need to have met, looked over the rates, figured out what we wanna present, um, come before the board, talked about it, all before September 30th. Um, I believe I Sean is already. A calendar invite. Yes, you have a calendar uh, invite. <laughs> <laughs> to, to our first meeting in August, so, um, and I'm pulling all of these numbers, trying to get everything ready for, for our first sit down, so. Um, and the first bills go out on the next? In the next, so we'll read again September 30th, the bills will go out sometime in early October, so, like within the first week of October, so. Yeah. So we have a little time in there to, to sit down and get these figured out, so. Thank you. This is gonna. This is useful information. All right. Next, D is the dog warrant process. So my normally come summertime. So dogs are supposed to be licensed in the town of Hardwick by April first. After they go delinquent, we send out delinquent notices, giving people some time to come in and. Um, you know, pay a, pay a late fee and get their dog licensed. And, and then we get to a point where clearly those people are not going to come in. So we do, the state authorizes the towns to do what they call a dog warrant. <laughs> and we send our dog catcher out to fine the people that have not come in and registered their dogs. Um, and we can continue to find them until they do come in and register their dogs. Um, Normally we do that sometime in early July. Um, with everything that was going on, it was a little crazy and we didn't get to it. Um, I approached Sean the other day um, and we f and found out that John Lange, our current dog catcher, has taken a short leave of absence because of some health issues. And so we don't have a dog catcher right now. So at this time, we have 68 dogs, I believe, as of today, when you printed my report, 68 dogs um, that did not get licensed as of April 1st and or respond to their late notices. Um, but at this point, I would normally have a, a warrant to present to you and have you sign off on giving John permission to go out, but we currently don't have a John. So, um, Sean, I don't know where we stand on that part. Can you kind of yeah, weigh I can, in? Yeah, I can provide some feedback on that. Um, we do have, uh, we don't know at this phase if uh, John is um, gonna step out of the role completely or he just needed a little bit of time, so I wanna make that as a first statement. Um, on a parallel path, uh, we actually have somebody who has reached out to us and said, look, if you need me to volunteer for a short amount of time, I would be willing to take on some of this duty uh, on behalf of the community in a volunteer situation. So, um, you know, we've got, uh, we do have uh, one option that, um, you know, if the select board wants me to uh, further discuss with uh, Chief Cochran and then this individual, uh, if we needed and decide it's important, we go ahead with this. You know, we can get somebody in the role. Potentially, uh, you know, the, the select board can do an authorization at the August 15th meeting. Yeah, so the issue with not doing it, to my way of thinking, is that um, if, you, if the town doesn't follow up over time, people, fewer and fewer people are gonna mm -hmm. license their dogs, and right. the idea is to keep them licensed. And there's general liability issues. 
with people who have unlicensed animals and then what's our action if there's a problem where there's a dog bite yeah. with an unlicensed dog and blah, 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 it's I need to really offer um, a clarifying statement to you know the discussion uh, as we're talking you know the discussion with the volunteer was I don't think they were necessarily thinking uh, they were going to be assigned as the person to go out and track down you know 68 of our residents to say well you know your license isn't, license isn't processed it was more the context of hey, if you get a call about uh, you know a dog that needs to be picked up or it's a stray dog situation so I I'm sorry I need to offer okay. that a clarifying yes. point mm -hmm. I can ask the individual and, and we can't so this is something that needs to be delivered in person not certified yeah. mail or no unfortunately at this point we did the mailing process now it actually is that the dog catcher is supposed to visit them and and find them for if he finds that they're still in possession of the dog, he's supposed to find them for it. So I think I I did I forgot to write this down before I came up tonight. I think it's like fifty dollars mm -hmm. that they get as a fine. Mm -hmm. um, for what period of time? I think that they have like thirty days from the time that he $50 finds them. Fifty dollars a month. Yeah. Until they register the right. dog. But if we haven't given them that first warrant, that's right. fifty dollars. Who wouldn't they get that first? Right. When he, when John the visits point. them, that's when he can do the first buying. So doesn't the, or it seems to me historically the dog catcher has worked for the police, essentially. And if right now, if there's a dog that needs to be picked up, the police are the ones that are handling it. Or if we get a dog complaint, they are handling it. I did not have time to talk to Aaron, so I'm not sure if taking on 68 mm -hmm. dog visits is mm -hmm. part of what they have available for time or not. John, might this person who volunteered be willing to change his scope of <laughs> the scope of his offer? <laughs> and uh, I assume paid. volunteer means you know with no pay, but I wouldn't ask him to do that without some sort of reimbursement or some sort of. Is it okay. to get paid? Yeah, yeah. it's not That's a ton of money. A, a, a stipend of $100, I think, on 200 a month. It's pretty small. Yeah, and mileage. Considering, considering yeah. Um, so it sounds like we have a bunch of clarification that needs to happen. We need to figure out what John's time frame is and whether this person's willing to do it and what Aaron. And if Aaron has any other idea. creative mm -hmm. solutions that. Yeah. that um, so it's something that needs to go by hand, huh? Between all the officers over here, I'll do the road patrol. They can stop in and see if they're in their face and keep on going on the back roads and <laughs> here in the air. I mean, I. Well, I hey, let's sick Tom on this task. <laughs> He's got it all figured out. Hey, but, hey, uh, she, with, if she prints them out, we'll go out at the same time when we do water notices. We'll pin them up right next to them. So. <laughs> when, uh, do you when, have to talk to someone in person or do you just have to pin it up, Alberta? Um, no, I think you have to talk to somebody in person with these. But. Okay. I can find that out. I can clarify okay. that if I am sending them out anyway. This uh, I didn't realize uh, the issue with John came up just a little bit in advance of I, I just didn't know the timing and the dog warrant issue. I would have been a little bit more ahead of it. We just it came up and John's done a lot of service for our community yeah. over years, so we were giving him a little bit of flexibility. And yeah, all of a sudden, hey, we got to do the dog warrants, and I was like, uh oh, we got a logistical problem here. So can we? Is it? So we don't want to let it drop entirely, but can we? push it out until our next meeting yes. and see what's... Absolutely. Okay. Oh, yeah. I just... It needed to be discussed as far as what we were right. going to do. Yeah. Um, but the best thing would be... Is if these people if would please people come in and register their ahead. dogs. They could yes. avoid the $50 fee. <laughs> yes. Alberta and the will, visit. <laughs> Alberta will take your dog license form or whatever. Yes. Yeah. And you'll be charged a lot less than $50 if you just come in and do it. Yes. That would be the best thing you could do. <laughs> Just you're on this do list. It. Alberta, you say there are 68 people who are scoff laws on this. How many people have registered their dogs? Oh, goodness. Tanya? 560? Oh, wow. Yeah. So it's really a smaller percentage, yeah. Yeah. so yeah. it would just be really yeah. nice if the 68 would turn up. No, but some of those dogs are no longer with them. Oh, 509. Yeah. 509. And some of them mean, There's all kinds of reasons why people don't do that. So mm -hmm. they just need to. And yeah, it could turn out that some of yeah. those dogs have passed Moved away. Moved away, right. passed right. away, run yeah. away, whatever. Yes, exactly. Yeah. But we just need to know. We, yeah. Yeah. Find law versus 
supposed I mean by by state law yeah. we are supposed to know so we just need to know we need to know all right so if you registered your dog last year please go see and you haven't come in to the town clerk's office this year you need to all right thank you Alberta I think that concludes your the Alberta session of the meeting um, Right on time, too. Yeah, perfect. Uh, we're rolling into item two, Creamery Road project, which is um, Lamoille Valley Rail Trail plus parking at the town garage area. There's the, it actually started as the parking lot project and then took on the rail trail aspect. Um, and uh, we just need to, uh, this board needs to have a discussion about the um, we, the speed bump in the in the process of realizing that the original track in front of this um, right next to the depot was apparently the section that was left the section that was intentionally left by the depot was not in the V trans view to be left there permanently and they thought that it was coming out the historical society thought it wasn't coming out anyway so um, there was a meeting I don't know some weeks ago with folks from VTrans including um, like our project overseer person and someone from historic preservation and someone from right away uh, the environmental permitting type stuff so we had a whole crew and um, Liz was there I was there Sean was there Cherry was there our engineer was there our engineer was there who's had, who had plans pretty much drawn up assuming the tracks were going to be gone um, so the question then was well what are the constraints what are the you know what, what are the legal aspects essentially of, of the tracks but I think ultimately I think we knew at that meeting and I think this has been maybe confirmed at this point that ultimately it's going to come back to this body to say how we would like to move forward um, because basically all the other entities that I mean their, our project manager at VTrans really just would like us to complete the project um, uh, in some way, shape, or form. Um, Vast is involved as the leaseholder for the Lumoil Valley Rail Trail on top of the rail bed. They just want to see a trail go through. They don't really care too much where it is exactly as long as it goes through. Um, and uh, so it really comes down to us and their, um, and how do we, you know, navigate this and I guess I don't know if I if I were to throw out a starting point I would say can we look at what it would take to just run the trail next to the tracks and keep going I really like that oh, I'm just curious question? too so the historical society wants to keep them and what what um um just have the tracks there themselves or there's some project around just them have the what? tracks there the tracks were left there deliberately to enhance the sense of this is a depot here was the railroad in fact there were two layers two level two two tracks ran parallel to each other in front of that building uh, the one that was left as best we can determine by looking at pictures is the one that was closest to the depot and they tore up the one that was further from the, from the depot. And you have to have two tracks because trains go in both directions. And you want to be able to have trains meet and go past, and it's a lot more complicated than that, but that's what it amounted to. Um, and as late as 1980, there were still two tracks up there. And the pictures, while I haven't, haven't measured it, um, it looks like the tracks were maybe four feet apart, four feet away from each other. Uh, you know, if you've ever been in a train that, that met another train, there's not a lot of distance between them. Um, so in my mind, there probably is a pretty solid bed on the other side. And if, if at the point the trail comes to the track that's in place, we simply jog to the north by about three feet and then run parallel for the 200 feet of tracks and then they 
jog to the south and pick up the original or not. That it, it's not a huge modification. So the concern of the engineer was that um, from the edge of the depot deck to the existing ditch is, I think, 25, 25 feet. feet. right? And so the, and then if you, I can't remember the exact figures, but to the far edge of the track, you've already used up 12 or 15 of those feet. Something like that. Quite a bunch of them. So that only leaves you with like, what, 13 to 10, 10 to 13 feet until you are in that ditch that's currently there. And so his concern was, well, how do we manage water runoff? That ditch is important for draining mm -hmm. a lot of that area, not just the trail, but also the creamery, the uh, north side, uphill side, town garage side, where the new parking lot's gonna be. And where, so he just wanted to be sure that the drainage would be adequate. And, and you can't, there is some space consideration in that at some point, if you kept moving that trail to the north away from the depot and then you had to move the ditch, then you're basically shrinking the parking lot. Right. right. And potentially opening up a pretty substantial permitting process right. around, Correct. if you and will. So the best case scenario would be if it would just fit in there mm -hmm. somehow. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure how. And that's, so that's a question for our engineer. Mm -hmm. Could I offer a comment? Uh, yes, to that please point? do. Just to that point, um, we did, uh, uh, Ken Brown from uh, VAST, VAST oversees these improvements and you know they, they're actively involved with LVRT. Ken Brown actually did a site visit one day, so he met with the Wiz the day she was working at the Historical Society. He looked at it and you know his very quick assessment was, I, I think we have enough room to squeeze it in here and keep the railroad track remaining. So we had some ongoing discussions. That was about a month ago that was Ken, on, Ken was on site. So I did check with the uh, uh, Summit Engineering, it's a, um, Doug Weber is our lead uh, for the Creamery Project. And uh, just, you know, at, at, in a conversation actually this afternoon, just say, hey look, depending on how the conversation goes today, um, you know, what would you need for a next step just to evaluate and see, we, see if we can squeeze it in there and make it work. Um, there, the, the issue that also had come up, and it's for the good of the conversation, is uh, some folks had said, well, we have a little bit of concern with the recreation path being there and the railroad track being close. Um, you know, if you have, uh, as an example, a little kid on a bicycle and he takes a hard right turn, you know, maybe he falls down. You know, Eric will point out it's dangerous crossing, you know, Route 15 on your bicycle. So, That's you know, what, what's more dangerous here? Right. So, uh, you know, to keep it an objective conversation, um, I, you know, I asked Doug about, and Ken also, look, we're going to have a place here where potentially we keep it uh, along in parallel. Ken's opinion was he thought there was enough space to make that work. The engineer has to look at it. And it seems to me with the information at hand, uh, there's, there's probably some reasonable strategies where something as simple as a split rail fence uh, near that railroad track or a planter or you know just some simple barrier uh, so you are you know protecting folks from going over to that side. And the same for the ditch if you're crowding it a bit. With the basic information at hand, it, it would appear we can run it in. But what Summit would do, uh, you know, assuming how this ends up here tonight, um, for a next step is, uh, and taking a step back, when this all came up, Doug was at a point where he was doing his final walkthrough to submit the final design to the state. And Wiz came out from the Historical Society and said, hey, what are you guys looking at? <laughs> oh, we're looking at blowing out the railroad tracks. What? So it's good it came up then and not after the fact is what I've said to many people. Um, so, um, you know, Doug said, look, we, uh, what we would do for a next step, obviously, uh, we were on hold till we kind of sorted this out at the local level. He would come and shoot some additional topo and then just see, okay, what, what can we potentially make work here? And the big picture item there is, he's looking at this as we are um, here at our level, that we can uh, do this without, um, you know, broaching, hey, we gotta reopen a permit, we gotta reopen whatever it is, stormwater or culvert, you know, we, we don't necessarily wanna get into that, and we shouldn't have to, to be clear. That would be a pretty significant disruption, in my opinion, on the project. So, uh, th and that's it, just the conversation I had with Doug this afternoon. Right, so, and to so, that end, if we tried to do something, a more radical solution of any sort, uh, the other, some of the VTrans folks who were there said, well, then you definitely would want to start your permit process all over again. And we were like, oh, we definitely don't want to do that. 
Mm -hmm. But it's possible that we could keep the characteristic of the historic and have the thing work. Well, it seems possible. And we haven't figured that out yet. Correct. So when will we know that? And so, so, well, just to back up a sec, so with our last meeting when we met on site, mm -hmm. the, when we left there, there was like the charge of, all right, so let's figure out the legal questions of who has, you know, the right to keep the rail versus tear the rail, you know, and all that. But as it turns out, all that's kind of a moot point, and really it comes yeah. back to us. Yeah. I mean, so we, here we are coming back. Mm -hmm. So if we say, Sean, yeah, please go talk to Doug Weber and figure out um, how if that's feasible and come back to us next time I think that's where we're at yeah I recognize there's um, you know I asked Doug about um, you know since he was nearly at the point of putting the stamp on the final design you know we do need to recognize there's, there's a little bit of extra cost um, you know we do have uh, money in the budget so um, there's there's some there and, and uh, I guess me uh, you know with what I know right now it, it wouldn't it shouldn't be that significant as far as what he can present to us and and in the in regards to the construction there shouldn't it shouldn't change the construction cost is my observation I mean all you're well, doing is adding a fence mm, yeah but unless you really crowd the ditch and you need some sort of a hard edge on that ditch, yeah so he, like you can't wall. get you can't get too far ahead of yourself of course right. right so there could be it could you Doug could come back and say boy if you because the, the one thing the vast folks really want is they want to be able to drive a 12 foot wide groomer through there. We got the room. Yeah. We have the room. So, yeah. I'm not the engineer, but we have the so room. We just have to find <laughs> out what the actual. The next step would be. What uh, would the what plan look like? What would the plan look like? Yes. Would it cost a significant amount more? Yep. That's Which correct. my guess is it's not going to end up costing a significant amount more. And our benefit in keeping that characteristic to the historic depot that we've preserved for all these years like why would we not do it now why would we not continue to yeah, just at a cost keep that more historic open up thing. the permit process so it seems like we ought to explore it if as, it's as not a yeah if it's not going to be like a, a crazy you know if it, yeah I mean, we may have to have this discussion again if yeah. it comes back and says well the only way to do it is to do x y and z and then and they're gonna definitely going to make you, you know, to, yeah seventy five thousand dollars well that's an obvious answer yeah. but we should know what what the reality of making the decision is instead of just a guessing game. right if it's a few thousand dollars of design changes and a few thousand dollars more construction costs that. than yeah. you know whatever because in the grand scheme of this rail trail this is still um, a Still less expensive makes it a, a really section. interesting part of the it makes trail. it interesting, mm -hmm. yeah. I can imagine even... And we want that to be a trail head to, yeah. to some degree because yeah. all of the parking's mm -hmm. there. And so things are potentially happening at that spot anyway. So it just makes it more of a feature, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Does it change the accessibility because it'll be harder to access from the town side of the track? Mm -hmm. You'll have a way to get over. So there's that currently that wooden walk way that, that goes over. So you would just that's how you get on there. Oh, yeah, okay. that we did with preservation funds as well. Yeah. It actually enriches it because the trail becomes a side track, mm -hmm. which is something I think is you know, is, is essential and very common in railroad parlance and, and the way railroads work, but doesn't show up on the Moyle Valley Rail Trail anyplace else. So that Hardwick has a trail with a side track. You have to move your switch. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, the, the switch doesn't belong there anyway. The switch is just decoration. So is this, um, so what's our next step? Do we, do we give okay to go ahead and if it doesn't exceed a certain amount or do we mm -hmm. just could get, come back to the next meeting? What's and well, Doug, it's going to take Doug a little while to figure it out and I think it totally would be reasonable to say, Sean, talk, you know, go back to Summit Engineering, come back next time and hopefully by next time he'd have something, but I'd say it's not guaranteed depending I on I don't think we'll have the report on the topo work uh, at the August 15th meeting but with, with your folks you know with the select board's permission what I would do is clear Doug to come out and he needs a little bit of time to shoot some topo in that area yeah and it's not a significant cost and we understand that there is a so cost. he can put that on paper to say okay this is what it does to but, the budget yeah and here are the options yeah and we're willing to pay him to do that yep. would, would it be of any value to him if the historical society were to take a weed whacker 
to that land so that, that he doesn't, he's not looking at August weeds. So Does I it can, make any difference? I can tell you that um, he, he did, yeah, probably would be helpful. Would be a good thing to do. Well, I think it would hurt. Tom, okay. do you think? It doesn't hurt anything to weed whack it, does it? It might. It might. <laughs> <laughs> when he was out on the rail trail and they were shooting lines, he was he did ask if it could be mowed before they did got he? there. He okay. did. He's got it. So we'll take we, can, care of it. we can offer that well that's our yeah. little bit of incentive. Try to whack some weeds so you can see the ditch. Yeah. yeah. Right. Tom where doesn't it? have to involve you. Where we'll take the machine that can make it. So, yeah. Don't take that much to run the excavator down through through there. So. Well, sometimes when you when you have the extra, we'll talk after the meeting. You guys can talk offline. Careful, you want your rear tracks there, right? <laughs> <laughs> Tom's like, I can clean that up. <laughs> Give a little push. <laughs> Um, All right. So the, the, the topo work, I asked Doug about this, and we do. Uh, I I wasn't able to put my um, hands on the uh, number, but uh, bear in mind this project is carryover from the 2006 earmark. Yeah. So there's it, there's a significant amount in that. And if we had proceeded, there was going to be some leftover, if you will. So by us doing the topo work, it's we're still with, well within the budget, and it's no direct out of cost for the town. Right. So it's just less rolled into. It'll be less rolled into. To another section potentially yeah yeah so I don't, i'm not quite understanding the topo work so the topo work we wouldn't have needed it if we were just going to rip out the tracks that's correct but we're it would have been done just because it's tight yeah exactly. okay. that's, that's correct so statement added so yeah. we didn't need to know exactly the depth of the ditch and everything and where it was relative because there was plenty of room they didn't locate the tracks on their initial because they were going away so now, look, if I got to plot this, I need to know where the track lies, you know, as an example, too. Oh, so they've already, like, plotted it and done? Oh, they yeah. plotted yeah. as if the railroad tracks were out. Redoing it because they didn't put the stuff on the first. That's correct. Because they well, were there must have been some cost associated with out. removing right. the railroad right. tracks. That's correct. So maybe it, it, it may be a wash in the end, end right? Yeah. So I, I, if it's okay, then I'll reach out to Doug and say, yeah, go ahead and do your topo work. And so the board we'll generally there. agrees? Yes. Okay. More information to get, yeah, to go and, ahead and uh, have Doug. Thanks do that. to Wiz for, um, you know, she led up some efforts to get the historical society involved, and um, it's. Uh, I think we're in a good place to get this sorted out. I mean, so. She came out and had a history. No, you didn't actually. <laughs> <laughs> now, the fact of the matter is, when you came out, I said, "Oh no, I bet you everybody doesn't realize the railroad tracks are coming out." And I didn't know either. I didn't know. You didn't know. No. Well, they're not. <laughs> Maybe, Maybe not. not. Yeah, yeah. I didn't. Yeah, I didn't know actually. All right. So good. Good discussion. Uh, let's carry on to item three. Board to sign off on the fiscal year 2019 audit engagement letter with Sullivan Powers and Company PC. These are the same folks who've done our audits for the last several years. And we're, we had at one point looked around, I think it was two or three years ago, at um, looking at maybe changing auditors and ultimately decided to stick with these guys at that point. So we're looking okay, at sticking so with them again. Uh, just a little bit, um, a small fee increase from last year. Um, we do have enough budgeted to cover it. Um, I did 27, I think, in case we needed a single audit, but um, we'll, we, we, we'll be all set because, um, but anyway, 23,000 is what it's gonna be. It was 21,500 last year. So we do have. Is it just me or every meeting, either the auditors were here or they're gonna be here or we're doing a contract or it's like, seems like it's- The auditors the seem, they have a year round. Yeah. yeah. Nothing yeah. wrong with that. We want them here, just making sure we're doing things right. Okay, okay. You know, that's a good thing. All right, all right, good. Um, so, um, that's something that we need to sign, right? Yeah. Could we have a motion to accept the contract with Sullivan and Powers? So moved. Uh, and Seconded. Okay, and any discussion on continuing with services with, for auditing services with them? Or? Yeah. We haven't had any trouble with them and they have this thing that I kind of like where they, I, they've pulled me in once or twice and I think they, every year they focus on a slightly different area and they'll pull in different people. 
So you might get asked to come in and answer questions about how the town runs, what's your understanding, you know, are there any places you think that uh, there are problems or there, there's, you know, that we have, we're open to risk. So I don't know, I've been happy with them so far. Yeah. All right. So all in favor of approving contract with Sullivan Powers, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. That was everyone. So. Need all the signatures on each of these copies, both please. Of them? Yeah, okay. please. And um, so select board reports. Anybody want to report anything? Um, we have a couple of nice World War II exhibit. Well, yeah, a couple of World War II exhibits at the depot and an exhibit of a young woman <coughs> who grew up in Hardwick and went on to be an actress and won an Emmy, and we have her Emmy. And open hours are? Uh, Tuesday through Thursday, Tuesday and Thursday afternoons, one to four, or by appointment. And any other? Select board reports. Chamber players are at the townhouse tonight. Oh, tonight. And for three, we'd have to hustle. Two, two, three more weeks, I believe. Three more Thursday nights. Cool. Two. New business. Two more Thursday nights. Eric, I forgot to comment on something from the last meeting. That would be old business. Yeah, you brought up the issue on the power line at the last meeting. Is that correct? Uh, I think there were telephone lines. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You brought that up, right? Across from yeah. the So I did. Uh, I did check into that. I reached out to um, uh, as Comcast. So the as most the, the, their lines. Uh, the most recent report I got is that they were going to have an engineer look at it and consider setting a pole to raise the line. There's no danger there, to be clear. But so we did check into it, and they are looking into it. Consolidated. Oh, thank you. Consolidated. Yeah. Sorry. How's no, the phone? Comcast. Yes. Okay. Consolidated, excuse me. Thank you, Casey. So they are they are checking into it. And thanks for bringing that to our attention. They said that they would have the engineer look to see if they could add a pole so that they would come that, up. That doesn't mean they're going to. Yes. They're looking at yes. it. But as long as there's no danger. Uh, I mean, it's, it's just not an ideal situation. No, because kids can swing on that. Oh, yeah. Oh, I know I would if I was a kid. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so the, uh, any other old business? We're gonna adjourn. Thank you, everyone. Appreciate it.